Hi, it's Chris from Databento. This is a quick video to demonstrate how to request historical market data from the Databento API using the Python client library. So to be able to request data, you need an API key. So assuming you've signed up already, you can find these on the API keys page of the user portal. Next, we need to ensure that the Databento Python package is installed. So we can run pip install Databento. I already have all the dependencies installed and version 0.29 of the Databento package. I'll now start IPython, which is an interactive shell. And we firstly need to import Databento. And to be able to request historical data, we need to initialize a historical client. And this is where we pass the API key string. So for context, let's say we're interested in obtaining historical trades data for the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract. And we can do this using the client's time series get range method. So the first parameter we need to specify is the data set. So this instrument trades on the CME Globex venue. And you can find these data set codes in the documentation. So we can actually request all symbols for the venue. But let's say we're specifically interested in the March expiry contract this year, which is ESH4. For the data schema, we said we're interested in trades. We also have full order book depth, aggregated order book snapshots, top of book quotes, bar aggregates, definitions, and more. So you can find details of these other schemas in the documentation. And we also need to specify a time range. So this can be as fine as nanosecond resolution, but let's say we're just interested in last Monday to Friday, midnight UTC. So we can now execute this. And we're currently downloading the data to the local machine via a HTTP streaming request. So now that we have the data, we can convert it to a pandas data frame using the 2DF method. So let's see, we've got just over 1.7 million rows and we can inspect the data by calling head on the data frame. So we have some timestamp columns on the left, notice the nanosecond resolution. Some of the other columns, aggressor side, bid and ask, trade price in US dollars, size in number of contracts, and the raw symbol ESH4 at the end. So we can now use this data for any sort of research. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I'd recommend you check out the Getting Started Guide next. And if you need further help, don't hesitate to reach out to us in the Databento HQ Slack community or through Intercom. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more helpful video content coming soon.